Hey guys, it's me, Mr. Miller. We're going to talk about the metric system today, and you're going to need your fill-in notes as we go forward here. So what is the metric system that we're going to discuss? The metric system is defined as a measurement system based on the number 10, and it's a pretty easy system to use. Uh, it's also known as the International System of Units, or SI units, as we call that. It was actually developed by the French, and it's known as Système International des Units. Now, what are some of the common SI units of measure that we're going to work with? Uh, this is the basic measurement over here on the left, and then here is the standard SI unit uh, that is used for that. Length is the meter. Mass, the SI unit is kilogram. Weight, it is a newton. For liquid and gas volume, we use the liter. For solid volumes, we use cubic meters. Density, we're using kilogram per cubic meter. Temperature, we use Kelvin, and then finally time, we use seconds. And again, these are just the standard SI units, and there's other units that we will probably use more often in class that I'll tell you about later. Well, let's start with length. Length is the distance from one point to another, and the tool that we use to measure length is typically a metric ruler. Here's one that we use in class. Uh, we've also used the big meter sticks that are longer. These are the tools that we're going to be using. Now, for smaller system distances, we will use centimeters and even millimeters. For longer distances, we're going to use kilometers. So how do we measure the length? Well, first of all, let's take a look here. How many millimeters are in one centimeter? Well, take a look right here. You can see here's one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters. Each of these lines represents a millimeter. So within one centimeter, there are 10 millimeters, like we said before, a system of uh, measurement based on the unit of 10. So what is the length of the line above in centimeters? Well, this line right here, of course, would be 1 centimeters. What is the length of the line above in millimeters? This would be 10 millimeters. Now as we look down at this ruler with this line right here that I'm underlining, what is the length of the line in centimeters? Well, this one happens to be, there's two. So this is 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8 centimeters. What would that be in millimeters? 28 millimeters. All right, so that's how you use centimeters in millimeters. So what's mass? We've said mass and weight are different. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. Mass will never change no matter where you go in the universe. So whether you're on Earth or the moon, your mass will remain the same. Notice over here, uh, the mass of you is 56 kilograms. The mass on Earth is 56 kilograms. Your mass on the moon would be 56 kilograms. Mass never changes. It's the amount of matter that makes you up. So how do we measure mass? Measuring mass, we use a triple beam balance, and this is the triple beam balance. The first thing you do is you make sure the balance is balanced before starting. Second, you place the object on the tray in the center of the scale. Third, you start to slide the largest weight, which is in the center, to the right until the arm drops below the line over here. Then you move the rider back one groove. Make sure it locks into place into the notches. Fourth, you repeat this process with the top weight. When the arm moves below the line, again, you back it up one groove. Fifth, you now slide the small slider up front across, and you slide that small weight on the front until the beam, until the lines right here line up. That's when you know it's balanced. Six, add the amounts on each beam to find the total mass to the nearest tenth of a gram. So you take this, plus the back one, plus this one, and it tells you your total mass. And there's a, spe there's a separate video that I have put for this, uh, and you'll look at that later. Reading the triple beam balance, it's pretty easy. You add them up, just like I did. For example, here, if your weight was right here, and this is a little bit different than the one we just saw, this would be 100. If it was there, that's 20, so that's 120. And what if our little one was right here, right where that arrow is? 
that's 5.5. When you add them up, that's 125.5 grams. That's how simple it is to use a triple beam balance. All right, back to weight. Weight is the measure of gravitational force on an object. Your weight will change wherever you go in the universe. So the weight on the Earth, right here, for example, is 560 newtons. But your weight on the moon might only be around 90 newtons. Again, weight will change wherever you go. Think about this. The more mass, the more gravitational force, which equals greater weight. What is volume? Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. You have volume. The desk has volume. This computer that I'm on right now all has a volume. It takes up amount of space. Now, solids and liquids and gases all have a volume. Now, the SI unit for solids, we said before, was a cubic meter. And in this class, we'll oftentimes use cubic centimeters. The SI unit for a liquid is a liter, but oftentimes we'll be using milliliters. Some of the tools that we'll use to measure liquid volume include graduated cylinders, which we see up here. We'll discuss more about volume and graduated cylinders in the next section. <coughs> Density. Density is the amount of mass in a given volume. Notice there's two things. It's amount of mass in a certain amount of volume. Different substances have different densities, and those densities will tell us a lot about an object, whether an object will sink or float. If an object's density is less than one gram per centimeter cubed, the object will float. If its density is greater than one gram per centimeter cubed, the object will sink. And again, we will focus more on density in the next chapter. Temperature. Uh, what is temperature? It is simply a measure of how hot or cold something is. That's all the definition is. The SI unit for temperature in science is Kelvin. However, the more common unit that we use in our science classroom is the Celsius scale. You're probably used to the Fahrenheit scale. Celsius is much easier. Notice in Celsius, the water freezes at 0 degrees. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. The tools that we use to measure temperature include thermometers. Time. What is time? Time is a measurement of the period between two events. The tool used to measure time, clocks and watches. All right, that concludes our notes on this particular section. Make sure that you get everything filled in. See you in class.